Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Tailor your Christmas celebrations. The warning and experts. What does shopping in downtown Cody and Barrett take the trip? And later in sports, reggae boys number 57. Here are the latest FIFA World Rankings. I'm Anthony Lug. Here are the details. Up first this afternoon, with the Omicron variant now in Jamaica, two public health officials are urging families to tailor their Christmas celebrations with relatives and friends to limit the spread of COVID-19. We will take a comprehensive look at celebrating Christmas in a pandemic yet again, beginning with Sandy Williams. December 25 is a day for family gatherings to receive gifts, hugs, and good wishes. But just like in 2020, this year's celebration will have to adapt to an undeniable reality, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Health experts say families should consider celebrating the holidays in a very different reality from 2019 and previous years, especially since the new Omicron variant, which is highly transmissible, is present in Jamaica. We might have to delay pleasurable gratification for another time if it's too risky to be gratified now. It is now time for us to assume personal responsibility for our health and that of our family and friends. We might have to impose travel restrictions on ourselves and encourage our friends and relatives overseas to delay any traveling at this time. We might have to limit our family gatherings just to the nuclear family and connect with their extended family by social media. Every member of the family has a responsibility to play his or her part in ensuring that the safety and protection of themselves as individuals and the rest of the family is ensured. Public health expert Professor Winston Davidson stressed that mask wearing within the home is also important. This to protect vulnerable family members from contracting the virus. We know that the use of the simple mask is the best barrier that we have against the disease, against the virus. Especially those who are elderly and in the family, one should ensure that this person or this relative gets the benefit of having the mask to use all the while in the family. And Associate Professor of Public Health at UTEC, Dr. Alveston Bailey shares the sentiments while outlining additional methods family can use to maintain safety. If Christmas dinners are being planned, why don't we consider outdoor picnics instead? Christmas dinner might have to be parceled out and dropped off on Christmas Day. If larger gatherings are being contemplated, we might consider asking all members of the family to do a lateral flow test or rapid antigen test on arrival or wear mask indoors. The usual Christmas parties might have to be considered or only enjoyed by the fully vaccinated. Why don't we consider drive-by Christmas greetings for our shutting friends and relatives? Sandy Williams, TVJ News. And shopping is also another Christmas tradition, and the economy has taken a battering due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Just days before arguably the, arguably the biggest shopping day of the year, Grand Market on Christmas Eve, mixed reactions from buyers and sellers in downtown Kingston about what this year will look like. Cody and Barrett has that angle. Curfew hours set, the health sector bracing for a fourth COVID wave and still vendors are waiting to see if shoppers are going to turn out on Grand Market night. When our news team visited downtown Kingston, we saw scores of people shopping, but there were mixed reactions from vendors about their expectations for this year. It's, it's early days yet to predict that, but slowly but surely get in there. Comparing last year and this time, Last year, kind of a little bit nicer than now because you have the dangerous strain and COVID-19 in the atmosphere. So people start to hesitant to come out come spend. But let us see what's happened. It's early days yet, right? The same people are going to come out. They're coming out. Where's the curfew? is 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, they're coming out, man. Yeah, so we're looking out forward to them. But everybody loves last minute. But they are coming out. We're confident they're coming out. 
Well, tell you the honest truth, the sales are right. It's better than last year by far, far, far. They might come out early, the people they might come out early, buy and go back home. Who leave work, come buy the same way in the evening and go back the same way. So you notice, you notice the road really crowded, because you saw early shopper come already and gone, you know. You understand? It's not like one time when you say Christmas, everybody a bungle up. No. A preview of what Grand Market Night might look like. Downtown Kingston decorated with clothes and toys to attract buyers. But some say that's all it is, a decoration. I don't see no sale in downtown Kingston, you know, nothing not going on. Normally, a Christmas week, they see, that's the people busy buying. The only thing, I see one and two people, them going at the wholesale and buy sheets. But otherwise, nothing is not going on. Nothing, nothing. And you can't see for yourself so nobody is not buying nothing. People that just a walk and go about them business. I feel like there's no money not there. Because we can't believe it's not Christmas. This is not Christmas. Because nothing is not sell. Most people come to buy food nowadays and furniture. Nobody not really buy the clothes because, you know, everywhere lock or it's a lock early. And, you know, Jamaican people stay full them belly more than buy clothes and them something there. Food, you know, spend pan clothes. Clothes are just we are low while food, my money if you go in for me and my family. So you're spending money this Christmas? You're coming out to shop this Christmas? Or? No, no. Why? Because thing, times and things is very hard. Mm -hmm. Grand Market now will see you? Yes, I will come at Grand Market, but that's it. I don't know if I'm going to buy or I'll just come and look. I don't know how it's going to be. So as the days count down to Christmas, vendors are on the edge of their seats hoping that Grand Market Night will see a turnaround. In the meantime, we asked some vendors how they planned to spend Christmas. My plan is to spend Christmas like any other time. Just easy, we have a whole heap of food, drink a whole heap of cereal, get my mind at ease and that's basically it. Do as my Prime Minister say, leave the road by 12.30 the latest and reach home by 1 o'clock. Come back by 6 o'clock the next Christmas day. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. And with people spending more, the likelihood of criminals targeting them during the period has also increased. It's why security expert Robert Finzi Smith is urging Jamaicans to be extra careful during the Christmas period. O'Shane Masters now joins us live. Now, O'Shane, you spoke with Mr. Finzi Smith today. What exactly did he say? Thank you, Anthony. Now, the major point he made is that there are several things people can do to protect themselves at this time of the year. Now, we know during Christmas time, Jamaicans are eagerly rushing to shop for different types of things, including curtains and new linens. But one of the major things that some forget is that of personal security. It's a time of the year when experts say you should be extra careful because of robbers and other criminals. But how can people protect themselves? Security expert Robert Finzi Smith says with the recommendation of a mask due to COVID-19, the eyes of individuals must be watched. If you wash their eyes, you can tell. If, if you're carrying a bag or something and they're not looking at you, they're looking at the bag, they want the bag. You need to be aware of your surroundings. Don't let this season to be jolly rob you of being happy at the end of it. So you have to have a plan. The guy who's coming to rob you has a plan, trust me. He knows what he's going to do, he knows how he's going to do it, and he knows which direction he's going to bolt when he does. Sometimes the guy you're chasing doesn't have your things. He has passed it off to his confederate who you didn't take the time to notice. Where possible, try not to do any business with cash. Use your cards where possible. Now, security is not only about being on the road, but also at home. Mr. Smith says too often Jamaicans get caught up in the festivities and ignore safety. He says what happens is that people begin to relax, and that's when criminals pounce. Yeah, follow, follow your instincts, and if the dog bark and it's on our way, at least look. And if it feels wrong, mm -hmm. it's wrong. I tell people all the way, your cat and your dog smarter than you. They feel something wrong and the hair on their back rises and they either flee or attack. We get curious. I wonder, could it be? Yes, it could. And you need to make sure that it's not you, it's going to happen. Mr. Smith is also encouraging persons to be careful when using ATMs. 
Anthony, it's back to you. Thank you very much, O'Shane. And it's now time for a break, but stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to Midday News and thanks for staying with us. We begin this segment with news that Jamaica has recorded an additional 11 deaths from COVID-19. 2,461 people have now died from the virus. In its latest update, the Ministry of Health reported that the deaths occurred during the period August 30 to December 20. The ages range from 51 to 103. Meanwhile, Jamaica recorded 53 new COVID cases from 662 samples yesterday. The overall case count is now 92,279. The positivity rate is 7%. 14 cases were imported. 93 COVID-19 patients are in hospital. 13 are severely ill. There are 426 active cases on the island. In the meantime, 148 more people have recovered from the respiratory illness, increasing the overall recovery count to 64,582. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Here's Cody and Barrett. In business news, Spider-Man No Way Home is smashing box office records, reaching $751.3 million in worldwide ticket sales, making it the third highest grossing film of 2021. The movie has been doing very good in local theaters as well. In less than a week in theaters, the Marvel Cinematic Universe flick was sold out for Palace Amusement Cinemas, although only 60% of the capacity of tickets were sold to maintain physical distancing. In an effort to keep up with the demand for the film locally and in keeping with the spirit of Christmas, marketing manager and director of Palace Amusement, Melanie Graham, says tomorrow, Christmas Eve, will see all films being offered at half price. And in business regionally, Haiti will benefit from a fifth and a final round of debt relief for low-income countries by the International Monetary Fund, IMF. The IMF Executive Board approved the relief on debt service from the 25 member countries that are eligible for support under the Catastrophe Containment and Relief Trust. Another four are expected to request such relief in the coming weeks. The extension of relief until April 13, 2022 means an additional 115 million US dollars will be made available. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And with the top regional and international stories, here's Sandy Williams. In the region, the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, is reporting that the number of COVID-19 cases in the Caribbean is on the rise. PAHO yesterday said cases have increased by 16% over the last week. It says Trinidad and Tobago continues to report an increase in cases. PAHO added that the wider region of the Americas has now surpassed 100 million cases of COVID-19. On the international scene, there are encouraging signs about the rapidly spreading Omicron variant coming from South Africa, where it was first identified. Scientists there say they have passed the peak of the Omicron outbreak, which doesn't compare to the chaos when the Delta wave swept through the country. What advice do you have for other countries that are facing a Omicron wave? Don't panic. This is, uh, it w you will ride the wave, far less use of oxygen, far fewer people being admitted despite the high numbers of cases, very high transmission of people getting mild illness, not even getting diagnosed at home. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. And we head now to a quick break. When we return, we'll have your midday sports report. Simon Preston is standing by. Welcome back. It's now time for Midday Sports. I'm Simon Preston. The Reggae Boys will end the 2021 calendar year at number 57 as the December edition of the FIFA World Rankings were released today. Not only does Jamaica remain 57th in the world, but they also remain 5th in CONCACAF behind the United States, Mexico, Canada and Costa Rica. Jamaica also remains number 1 in the Caribbean. Jamaica started 2021 at number 47 in the world. The Reggae Boys will next be in action on January 20 against Peru in a friendly international. Their next World Cup qualifier is on January 27 against Mexico at home. Meanwhile, the top 10 ranked teams in the world reads Belgium, France, Brazil, England, Portugal, Spain, Argentina, Uruguay, Mexico and Italy. Reggae Boys midfielder Kevin Lambert has signed a two-year extension with Phoenix Rising FC in the United Soccer League. The new deal keeps him at the Arizona-based club until the end of 2023. 
The 24-year-old has made 118 appearances for the club since joining them in 2017. Lambert also won the most aerial duels in the USL last season with 238. He has been part of the Rising FC team that won the USL Western Conference title in 2018 and 2020. Lambert has made 14 appearances for the Reggae Boys since his debut in 2017. Across the Atlantic we go now as the English Premier League has postponed Liverpool's game against Leeds United and the match between Wolves and Watford because of COVID-19 cases. Both games were scheduled for Boxing Day but have been called off and after requests from Leeds and Watford. The Premier League said Leeds could not play due to the number of players with COVID-19, injuries and illnesses. At sports time, the other eight fixtures are slated to go ahead for this weekend. To cricket we go now as Paul Collingwood is set to stand in for Chris Silverwood as England's head coach during their T20 international series against the West Indies next month. The 45-year-old is one of England's assistant coaches. Silverwood will be taking some time to rest after the Ashes series in Australia. The five-match T20 series is set to run from January 22 to 30. All matches will be played at the Kensington Oval in Barbados. Silverwood is expected to be in the Caribbean for the three-match test series against the West Indies in March. And finally this afternoon, President of the Jamaica Amateur Gymnastics Association, Nicole Grant-Brown, is remaining hopeful that Olympian Danusha Francis will be able to compete at the Commonwealth Games next year. Here's Renarda Brown. Here's Danusha. Danusha Francis, who became only the second Jamaican gymnast to compete at the Olympic Games, was only able to take part on one apparatus due to a knee injury that got worse on the eve of the Tokyo Games last summer. Francis, whose Olympic debut lasted only 11 seconds, did surgery on her knee in mid-September with the hope that she would be back competing before year-end. However, President of the Jamaica Amateur Gymnastics Association, Nicole Grant-Brown, in speaking with TVJ Sports, revealed that Francis may not be able to compete at the Games in Birmingham in July. We're hoping that Danusha Francis will get well soon. I know she has had her surgery and she's healing much, much better now. Um, she also is working with some of our juniors in London and we're very excited about that. We hope and we are really praying that, you know, hopefully if she's able to compete, that will definitely be a plus. But if not, we have competent um, gymnasts who can, who can fill her shoe. In the meantime, Francis is also remaining hopeful she could make the Com Games, but may not be able to make a determination on her fitness until March. Unfortunately, my surgery had to be more serious than originally planned, so that has made the recovery process longer also. But the recovery is going really well and I'm a few weeks ahead. So although Commonwealth doesn't seem likely, if I continue at this rate, there could be a chance. So we'll see. I think about the six-month post-op mark, I'll be able to tell more. Um, I'd love to be out there, but I'm also being realistic and I'd love to have a strong knee for the rest of my life even more. The 2022 Commonwealth Games is set to run from July 28 to August 8. Renata Brown for TVJ Sports. And that is it for your Midday Sports Report. I'm Simon Preston. Anthony, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Simon. And that's it for your Midday News this afternoon. I'm Anthony Lugg. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.